The Origin 12 shotgun is an absolute machine. With it, you can lay down a wall of gunfire that wipes out anything in its path. If you want a gun that excels at close range, then this is a great option. With this class setup, you can decimate multiple players and give yourself a real advantage in the war zone. I would happily recommend this weapon to both solos and team players, as it's just so dangerous and easy to use. In this video, I'm going to break down my ideal class setup and follow up with a bit of general advice on using it. Feel free to change up different parts of this class to suit your individual playstyle, as what works for me might not necessarily work for you. But I have had plenty of experience with this gun, and this is what I consider to be the best formula. This class build is going to really put focus on two things overall, damage output over time and mobility. One of the greatest strengths of the Origin is that it can provide sustained fire for a comparatively long time when compared to other shotguns. This is something that I really want to exploit and take advantage of. Combining this with high mobility is going to be the best way of doing so. Mobility lets you get up close and personal as well as stay out of the firing line, hence its importance. That's why my first mandatory attachment is going to be extended mags. This increases your default magazine from 8 rounds to 12. It will allow you to keep up your damage output for a bit longer and will also mean that you don't have to spend as long reloading keeping the amount of time you're vulnerable nice and low. Now if you have the drum magazine attachment, you get 25 rounds, which is wild for a shotgun of this type, but I wouldn't say that this is any better, as you take a considerable hit to mobility and reload speed when you use this. You become so slow moving that it's a problem. I'd personally say that 12 round extended mags are the happy middle ground between sustained damage amper and remaining mobile. Now in keeping with the remaining mobile theme, the next attachment I'm going to be adding is the 5 megawatt tag laser. This laser makes your hip fire much more accurate and shortens your sprint to fire time. It comes at a trade-off that is visible to enemies, but this is a small price to pay in my opinion. This attachment means you don't have to worry about aiming in as much, so you can stay mobile even when you're taking shots. If you get caught off guard, it makes returning fire a lot easier, as you don't have to worry about being overly precise. There is very little point in aiming in with a shotgun of this kind, in my opinion, as it's never going to be a one-shot kill. You're better off getting multiple shots off and staying harder to hit, hence this attachment. Now, in order to help with the hit fire accuracy, I'm also going to be sticking on the forged attack precision barrel. This tightens the pellet spread, with a very minor increase to weight that you won't really notice. Tighter pellet spread means your hit fire accuracy will gain a much needed boost, without a major compromise to mobility. It means you can be confident in close range engagements that you will do a reasonable amount of damage at all times. Without a doubt, you can shoot across rooms and floors using this attachment, which is all you should really expect from a shotgun. It also means you can stick to hip firing and not have to worry about aiming down sights at all. In all the clips you'll see on screen throughout this video, not once will I aim in when challenging someone. It's far more important to stay on the move and remain a difficult target. Now for the muzzle comes a bit of personal preference. I'm personally going to recommend the tactical suppressor. It suppresses the sound of your shotgun, but most importantly keeps you off the map. Now there are attachments that further reduce pellet spread, such as the choke, but this won't give you the stealth advantage that's so important in Warzone. The Origin makes a racket at the best of times, so I think a suppressor is essential. If you're dealing with multiple people, it means you've got a better chance at sneaking in a reload between engagements. Plus, it'll stop other team slash players knowing your location and deciding to get involved in your gunfight. It also allows more breathing room in general, and for Warzone, I think it's absolutely crucial to run this attachment. It doesn't give you a penalty to range either, so there's really not a good reason for not using it. If you think you can manage without it or exclusively going for kills and not wins, then maybe stick a choke on. But realistically, staying off the map and out of sight is the best advantage you can hope to get. The fifth and final attachment is to run the no stock option. This gives you a nice little mobility buff. It's worth having simply to increase your overall speed and maneuverability. It doesn't make a huge difference, so if you want to run a perk on this weapon such as sleight of hand, then this would be a good attachment to swap out. Obviously, I haven't bothered with an optical front grip as they improve aiming speed, which isn't something you'll be doing with this class. I won't cover secondary weapons in this build either, as that's entirely down to your personal preference. For tacticals and lethals, I'm going to recommend a stun grenade and C4. Both of these are useful for clearing out buildings and dealing with multiple enemies at once. If you're dealing with multiple enemies and need to reload, a C4 and tactical can give you the much needed breathing room in order to get that reload in. If you're dealing with a stubborn camper, then you can also use these to flush them out. There's never a situation when having a C4 isn't handy, and it fits the aggressive playstyle this class promotes very well. Seeing as we're running C4, I think it's fitting that perk 1 is going to be EOD. It keeps you safe from explosive, which, when you're doing a lot of close quarters fighting, explosives can be a major issue. A C4 coming your way can easily be the end of your game without this, so I think it's essential. Plus, you're at a greater risk of coming across claymores and proximity mines, as you're going to be charging into buildings far more often. Perk 2 is Ghost, which is an easy choice for me. It keeps you off the radar, preserving the stealth advantages I mentioned earlier when using a suppressor. It means you won't have to worry about being chased and trapped by enemy teams with UAVs, and it's handy for hiding your location in confined areas. An added bonus is that it keeps you off of heartbeat sensors, which can be a real pain when you're entirely dependent on close quarters combat. Finally, Perk 3 is 
going to be battle hardened. Again, in close quarters you're probably going to have tactical grenades coming your way. There's nothing worse than being paralysed by a stun grenade when you're face to face with an enemy. I've stunned myself plenty of times as well, and without this perk that surely would have been the end of my game. Now to get the most out of this class, you really want to be playing aggressive, focusing on buildings but also balancing stealth. You're going to be most effective when in a confined space where the enemy can't get away from you. Consequently, avoid open spaces and stick to buildings. Clearing rooms and houses is no issue for you, as you're quite literally built to do this. You can deal out massive damage at short range, so have nothing to worry about here. You need to be careful about lines of sight though, and moving between buildings, as this will leave you vulnerable. You need to carefully manage pushing up to one of your players in order to deal maximum damage with the risk that you have to take to get there. Make sure you play cover and stay out of enemy lines of sight for as long as possible. You also need to be wary of reloads, as this can be a serious issue at close range. Make sure you stay mobile and on the move. The last thing you want to do is get bogged down in the corner with no way out. This class thrives when you're in a high speed, dynamic engagement. You want the enemy to have a hard time knowing where you are, as this allows you to deal out massive damage before they have time to react. Don't try and go for overly long shots with this gun, as you'll just waste your time. Instead, lay down a heavy fire rate to punish your enemies for getting in the way. I'd recommend more shots over accurate ones, as you don't need to be overly precise due to the high amount of damage this gun does. Be wary of the attack laser though, as this can be a giveaway in dark environments. Realistically, it's going to be easy to manage for you, and most players won't realise what it is, or even see it. Focus on getting into close quarter situations where the enemy can't get out of your way, and you'll see serious results with this setup. This class is extremely fun to use, and it's perfect for a variety of Warzone players. If you want to switch to fast paced, high risk, high reward gameplay, then this class is for you. You can play to the strengths and weaknesses of this gun very easily, and if you have good reactions you'll do just fine in most scenarios. Don't expect too much rain from it though, as it hasn't got any to offer you. Make the most of spraying down walls of bullets and you can really see this gun shine. If you want a more in-depth video about getting the most out of shotguns in general, then check out the link in the description. Everything in this video has been my own opinion, and you may well want to change and tweak this class, which is totally fine. Use attachments that play to your strengths, so that you have the best experience with the gun that you want. Whatever you choose, this gun sure has plenty to offer you, and can be a great tool for getting high kills and wins in Warzone.